Um, I don't know if it's pe what people are expecting. I don't know that people are. I think people, some people will be satisfied and others not, not so, so much. much. <laughs> <laughs>Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will be going through the Inside the Episode documentary of Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 5, and responding point by point to the staggering amount of lunacy spewing from the mouth of these two idiots. Seriously, while watching this, not only did I lose many, many, many brain cells, but I almost denounced my faith in humanity in common fucking sense. And you will soon see why. Now, full spoiler warning for Game of Thrones for this episode, you have been warned. But before we go on, let's quickly go over why this episode is so hated. It's not because our expectations were subverted, it's because characters and their arcs were completely disregarded or betrayed. Massive gaps in character development were missing, and the teasers from earlier episodes were just that. They were teasers. The development of Daenerys Targaryen never suggested that she would burn an entire city to the ground after her enemies had surrendered. And all the excuses the writers have cooked up to justify the choice to subvert the audience can only be considered laughable. But anyway, let's begin. There's something you need to know. Someone has betrayed me. Daenerys. He knows the truth about John. He does. Danny's an incredibly strong person. 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 Close friendships and close advisors for her entire run of the show. You look at those people who have been closest to her for such a long time, and almost all of them have either turned on her or died, and she's very much alone. And that's a dangerous thing for someone who's got so much power to feel that isolated. So at the, at the very time when she needs guidance and those kind of close friendships and advice the most, uh, everyone's gone. Right, so Danny needs an advisor to tell her not to kill hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children. I thought she was supposed to be one of the strongest characters in this series. And you tell me she needs an advisor to say, Danny, don't burn babies alive. I understand that she's grieving, but you make it out that Masande is the straw that broke the camel's back. But what the fuck does Masande's death have to do with burning the city alive after they've already surrendered? All right, Masande's final words to Daenerys were Dracaras. So I'm supposed to feel sad that Masande's final words to Daenerys were burn them all. And if Danny listens to Masande instead of Tyrion's remarks of "Hey, use some common sense, you dumb bimbo," then that makes me respect Danny even less than I already do. Seriously, how weak can a person be? Also, all those advisors, with the exception of Masande, who isn't considered an advisor because she's always been dumb as shit. All those advisors died so that she could save the world. You think Danny would try to honor them by living up to the standard they held her, but but nah, let's 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 just, let's just burn the city, I guess. Also, if she's alone and her mentality is I'm alone so everyone dies, then isn't that going to make her more alone if she doesn't want to be alone? Jeez, this is the first response of the video to the soul of Deadpool's mouth shut and already so much retardation to unpack. I think that Barris knew that it was unlikely that he would survive the attempt to overthrow Danny in favor of John. Yeah, that's because you wrote Varys to be retarded. Also, everyone who says Varys committed treason by trying to poison Daenerys with the young girl, even if that's true, you're wrong. Let me explain why. Let me lay this out. Tyrion ratted Varys out on the grounds that Varys knew the secret, not that he tried to poison her. Also, if he was caught trying to poison Daenerys, wouldn't Daenerys have executed or at least shown the girl to Varys at his execution? So regardless if Varys did try to poison Daenerys or not, he wasn't executed on those grounds. The writers just wanted to kill him off ASAP, since Dumb and Fucking Dumber insisted on only six episodes for the final season, despite HBO offering them unlimited resources apparently. So yeah, Dumb of the Dweeb here wrote Varys to send letters regarding Jon while under Daenerys' guard, and then wrote for Varys to compromise his stance on Daenerys out in the open for everyone to see, which is why Tyrion ratted him out. And he also knew that ethically, in his mind, had no choice but to 
try to do that anyway. Yes, Varys has the purest intentions of anyone. Tyrion knows this, not to mention Varys saved Tyrion's life for the greater good. So Tyrion ratting him out makes absolutely no sense. It was me. Goodbye, old friend. I think that Tyrion is saying goodbye to his best friend in the world outside of his brother. Really? You call that a goodbye? Three simple words? Three words that can be summed up as the easiest fucking dialogue to write? Gold star, you egg-headed fuck. How about a plea of mercy on Varys' behalf? How about Jon intervenes? How about some reasoning between Tyrion and Varys? Instead we get three words and hand-holding. Does anyone need more proof that they were just trying to tick this box as fast as possible? And the, the amount of guilt that he feels over being the cause for his best friend's imminent death, it's hard to really get your head around. Also, you just said Tyrion is saying goodbye to his best friend in the world besides his brother. Again, so why would Tyrion rat out Varys exactly? And also, he sets Jaime free very, very soon. So why the fuck didn't he give Varys the chance to get away or do something smart since he has the biggest fucking brain in the world? I guess it's hard to write a character that's the polar fucking opposite of you and your idiot partner. I don't have love here. I only have fear. So let's burn a city to the ground to inspire love and fix this problem I have. And hold up, Daenerys saved the Seven Kingdoms by fighting White Walkers. The entire North has seen this. So why would people fear her? Shouldn't they love her by now? If not King's Landing, then shouldn't all the other houses who assisted love her? You will always be my queen. Ladies and gentlemen, behold half of Jon's dialogue for this entire episode. Jon Snow is someone that she's fallen in love with, and as far as she's concerned, by this point, Jon has betrayed her by telling people about his true identity, and also the fact that he's unable to return her affections at this point. All right, then. Let it be fair. So Jon refuses her incest, and because she gets so pissy about it, she's going to kill thousands of babies. Thousands of babies, you guys. Babies. Little frickin' babies. All because her nephew denied her some dick. Also, I just realized, Danny's a fucking hypocrite. You do realize that she did the exact same thing to Ser Jorah for eight fucking seasons, right? Did I mention Ser Jorah dies for her thinking that he had just died for the savior of King's Landing? Also, maybe I could give a shit about Jon and Danny if you gave season seven ten episodes to flush out their fucking relationship, you lazy mopey prick. I think that when she says let it be fear, she's resigning herself to the fact that she may have to get things done in a way that isn't pleasant, and she may have to get things done in a way that is horrible to lots of people. Mercy is our strength. Our mercy towards future generations. He will never again be held hostage by a tyrant. She goes to kill the people who are currently being held hostage by a tyrant. After they surrendered, and there was no reason to. Must I say any more? She chose violence. A Targaryen choosing violence is a pretty terrifying thing. You chose to skip writing class? <laughs> Even when you look back to season one when Khal Drogo gives the golden crown to Viserys and her reaction on watching her brother's head melted off. He was no dragon. And he was a terrible brother, you know, so I don't think anyone out there was, was crying when Viserys died, but there is something kind of chilling about the way that Danny has responded to the death of her enemies. Yeah, her enemies, you dumb shit. Say it with me slowly, her enemies, not innocent women and children who have just surrendered, you hat. Look, I'm sorry, I know tons of you hate it when I swear, but you saw the episode. Now you're watching this piece of shit documentary with me. Does anything non-derogatory suit the stupidity of these two embarrassments for human beings? And if circumstances have been different, I don't think the side of Danny ever would have come out. If Cersei hadn't betrayed her, if Cersei hadn't executed me someday, if John hadn't told her the truth, like if all these things had happened in any different way, then I don't think we'd be seeing this side of Daenerys Targaryen. I don't think she decided ahead of time that she was going to do what she did. And then she sees the Red Keep, which is to her, the home that her family built when they first came over to this country 300 years ago. 
it's in that moment on, on the walls of King's Landing when she's looking at that symbol of everything that was taken from her when she makes the decision to, to make this personal. So the Red Keep looked at her funny and that's what made Daenerys snap? Gatorade. H2O. Gatorade. H2O. Water sucks. It really, really sucks. Water sucks. It really, really sucks. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. No, no, total sense. Genius. Absolutely genius. Bravo. wanted her to be just death from above as seen from the perspective of the people who are on the business end of that dragon. In most large stories like this, it seems like there's a tendency to focus on the heroic figures and their, and not pay much attention to the people who, who may be suffering from the repercussions of the decisions made by those heroic people. And we, we really wanted to keep our perspective and our, our sympathies on the ground at this moment because those are the people who are, are really paying the price for the decisions that she's making. Oh, mate, we were laughing the whole fucking time. You failed spectacularly in your goal. It's hard to care when you watch arguably the most important character in this entire series do something so fucking ludicrous. People say that this has been teased for many seasons, ever since season two. Yeah, it was teased. Teased. That she could go mad, given the proper motivation. In season seven, she's defensive about the throne and her position of power, but is still adamant about helping people. She lets soldiers surrender and then burns them when they choose to defy her. She saves Jon from the White Walkers and parlays with Cersei for the greater good in Season 7. And she fights alongside Jon against the White Walkers to save everyone. None of this suggests that Daenerys is willing to slaughter innocent people and infants. Absolutely none of it. Losing friends and advisors doesn't fucking change that because they never had to tell her, don't burn babies. Do you understand? Also, while writing this, I just remembered that the White Walkers were a thing. Gosh, that seems so long ago, doesn't it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Grey Worm the Murderer. I think that John is also in a kind of denial. At first, the siege is a war. Soldiers killing soldiers. That's what war is. I think John is someone who's always been a very good soldier who has never enjoyed being a soldier. He's been trained as, as a fighter from the time he was a little boy. And he's quite good at it. He's quite good at leading men into battle, and he also hates it. I think for him, it all starts out seeming like it's going to work out, and then it turns into a nightmare. Yeah, and he fully contributes to that nightmare until he decides, after what feels like eternity, to be like, hey, this is bad. L l let's get out of the city. You turned him into Daenerys' whipping boy and then you just have him standing there gawking like a brainless mice just following the chaos until he realizes who the fuck raised him. It was this guy, by the way. When she takes off and starts burning the city, the Unsullied on the ground and the Northmen on the ground take that as their cue that it's a moral free-for-all. The good guys are behaving like the bad guys and the bad guys in the shot are the ones who are doing all of these horrific things around him who are his own men the moral lines that he's drawn for himself in his own life you can't be maintained for everyone in all situations all i heard was it's shocking right are, are you guys shocked yet we like to shock you please tell us that you're shocked and we were just like well after we held back our laughter we were just like meh whatevs i wonder what's on netflix Go home, go. It's a small scene, but it's also for us one of the most important scenes in the whole episode because it's the culmination of their of their story together. And you'll be dead too if you don't get out of here. Oh fuck off, you could have had that scene anywhere and any time you liked. It just had to take place at Cersei's front door, didn't it? I can appreciate the scene for what it is and for what you tried to do, but again, it breaks all bounds of reason in order to happen. Arya has been waiting to kill Cersei since Ned's execution eight seasons ago. You really think she's going to tuck tail and run when she could have just walked up the stairs and stabbed her? She rode all the way down from Winterfell. No, sorry, sorry. She teleported from Winterfell and walked through a King's Landing under siege to get to the Red Keep. She's not going to run away, you idiot. You should have had that scene at the King's Landing gates. I'm going to kill her. 
the road to vengeance always ends in one place, which is what the Hound is saying to her here. I've made my choice a long time ago, and this can only end in one possible way for me. But for you, you have so many other options. Look at me! You want to be like me? The Hound has genuinely come to have affection for Arya. I think he loves her as much as he's capable of loving someone. And he knows that if she comes with him at this point, she's not going to make it out of there. Sandal. Thank you. Being totally honest here, my heart fucking melted while watching that scene. And I'm not saying the Hound wasn't consistent with his character, because he certainly is. I can believe this scene from the Hound's perspective, but not from Arya's. She's come way too far to turn back now. She instantly turns from, I want vengeance, to, oh my god, you saved my life, thank you. The acting is on point, sure, but the reasoning and writing behind it is retarded. This was a choice made for the highest emotional resonance without any sense of logic, and it plays into Arya's next sequence. Hello, big brother. We've always wanted to see these two face off again, and they finally did. It struck us that it would be kind of apocalyptically beautiful to see them fighting on the stairway to nowhere, um, with the, the sky in the background and the dragon flying by and the flames everywhere. We knew that these two were going to die together um, at each other's hands, and we knew that the Hound's death had to be a death by fire. So the one thing stronger in the Hound than his fear of fire is his hatred of the person who put that fear there in the first place. First of all, does no one remember season one? They already fought one another. It's glaringly obvious that this was set up to adhere to the memes and nothing more. If Hound really cared about vengeance this much, then why the fuck didn't he seek out the mountain at the earliest opportunity instead of building churches in season 6? And where the fuck was that courtyard full of chickens? If you're gonna pander to the memes, at least do it right. Feels like you needed a perspective to carry you through this horror. Like you need a Virgil to take you through the hell that Danny's building. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the only reason Arya was ever at the Red Keep. It was simply done to set up this escape sequence. This entire episode, she does absolutely nothing besides walk up to the Red Keep, change her mind, and suddenly run for her life. She is only in King's Landing for POV shots, and nothing more. The reason we decided to follow Arya out of King's Landing and to, to see the fall of King's Landing through her eyes is, is something that we talked about with an earlier episode. You just care a lot more when you're with a character that you care about. So if we saw a lot of extras running around on fire and buildings falling apart, it might have been visually interesting, but it wouldn't have had much of an emotional impact. But when you're there on the ground with Arya, who's one of the people we care the most about, then everything takes on that much more of an edge. Yeah, well that's cheating, you see, because we don't give a shit about Danny anymore. Because what you've made her do is absolutely retarded. So to stop us laughing our asses off, you put one of the most beloved characters of the show in King's Landing, despite it not making any fucking sense, so the audience has to care. And make no mistake, the only reason I gave a shit about what was going on was because I'm heavily invested in Arya. But Arya should have never been there. And if she was, she should have done what she was built up to do for 8 seasons, which is kill the Queen. If she's not there to kill the queen, she's only there to look scared and run away. We knew that the hound would be convincing her to part ways with him and to not go to her death. And once she decides she needs to get out of the city, well, she's in, she's in the worst possible place you can be. So she's got to get from that central point all the way outside the walls of the city. It's the longest, hardest journey anybody has to make in the entire episode. Like I said, they put her there solely because it was the most dangerous place. During Daenerys' rampage, she's there only to escape the city while it burns to the ground. Also, what the fuck was that horse doing there? Was I the only one thinking that? And <laughs> look at all those dead bodies, like we're supposed to give a shit. You know, there's a scene several years ago where Jamie and Bronn are talking about how they want to go, and Jamie's talking about dying in the arms of the woman he loves. And this is it. I think he knows that they belong together, that they came into this world together, that they need to go out of this world together. 
Yeah, except he left her at the end of Season 7 because she's a monster and refused to help stop the dead from coming to kill her people. He slept with Brienne, someone he truly cares for, someone he knighted, someone who helped him regain his honor, and he just hits it and quits it? This makes no fucking sense. Also, I've had someone tell me in the comments that you can be addicted to someone if you're in love. Yes, that's absolutely true. But Jamie broke that addiction when he left King's Landing. I don't care what anyone says. Him going back to Cersei the way that these idiots wrote it makes absolutely no sense. Once he goes through the various exits and they're all clogged up with rubble and there's no way out and he knows there's no way out, he's just trying to calm down the woman he loves because he knows this is it. Look at me! Just look at me! Nothing else matters. <laughs> Nothing else matters. Only us. I think Jamie, by the end of episode five, has come to terms with who he really is. And he may not be happy with who he really is, but he knows he's not. He knows what matters to him, and Cersei is what matters to him. Yeah, so in other words, fuck Jamie's eight-year journey and the fans who grew to love him, I guess. Fuck you. Right, so that concludes the response. Honestly, this episode was such a damn shame. People keep saying that I just want to hate this episode because there's a bandwagon for it and that I'm blatantly ignoring stuff like CinemaSins does. Now, if you're one of those people saying that, then, well, first of all, fuck you. And second, nothing could be further from the truth. Why would I want to hate something I've been invested in for years? A show I used to watch on repeat. A show I used to procrastinate at university in order to watch. Why would I want this piece of art that started so great, this piece of art that I loved, why would I want it to turn bad? The simple answer is, I don't, and never did. But well, here we are. And you want to know what honestly fucking infuriates me? Is if you watch the extended documentary of this episode, the amount of professionalism on display from the production crew is incredible. The way that they built this entire city-sized set... The amount of detail, the cinematography, the blend of CGI with the practical, and the acting on display was masterclass from just about everyone. There is so much to praise about this episode. The cast and crew should be fucking proud of themselves. Seeing how much technical work went into this blew my mind, and it should definitely be commended. However, none of that matters because none of that can be taken seriously, and nobody is going to care if the writing is bad. Why would I care about the spectacle I'm watching if I see people teleporting, if I see characters betraying who they are at their foundation, if I see plot armor that protects a young girl from being scorched by dragon fire, and if I see giant plot holes that turn the story into a joke? If you can see through all the bullshit and enjoy this episode, I'm genuinely happy for you. But the writing is the most important part of any television series, because if that fails, then everything else fails with it. Writing is the foundation. If the foundation is broken, then everything else collapses. And that is Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 5 in a nutshell. I wanted to respond to this documentary because upon watching it, I couldn't believe the stupidity in the thought process of writing this. When I call these two dumb and dumber or the worst writers in history, I'm not being hyperbolic. I believe those words because I have nothing more incompetent to compare it to. Though I will admit, Ryan Johnson is a close second. And well now, much like Sansa Stark... Star Wars just got over one horrifying ordeal, and now it's going to have to face another. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.